When it comes to what is important, what really matters, what is the priority, communities are not wrong. I think this whole effort is really, you know, focusing on what are the assets there, what, what are the things that people can already, already have and can contribute. In two different parts of the world, local communities have found similar strategies for coming together, investing in themselves, and building a better future. In Kenya, East Africa, and in the East Tennessee mountains of the United States, Communities are creating their own foundations as a way to take on tough issues and provide for the generations that follow. The key thing about community development is the people. Giving people a sense of who they are, giving people a sense of things that they would like to deal with, giving people the capacity to deal with the issues that are important to them, and giving people the capacity to transform their circumstances and to change their environment. With headquarters in Nairobi, the Kenya Community Development Foundation serves villages and towns across the country's diverse terrain. KCDF helps communities find their own solutions to the challenges they face. Makotano means junction, and the village at this rural junction faces the persistent challenge of supplying water to the families living nearby. Because of frequent droughts and uh, people <coughs> suffering because of the drought, our livestock suffering because of the drought, we, we, we thought it was wise to, 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 to come together. We decided to come together, form an association, and start in our own small way to uh, build resources, to pull resources together so that we could start tackling the problems. In the early years, when we didn't even have donkeys, we had to carry the water ourselves. So then we moved on to the donkeys, which can bring 40 liters, but that is still not enough because you have to go back every other day. And therefore, we're really looking forward to having this dump. With the help of KCDF, the community of Makutano organized its resources to build the first in a series of freshwater dams. We used a very simple method to measure the importance of the problem. People would put a stone in a basket. There's a basket for the need for water. There's a basket for health. There's a basket for cultural issues. The heaviest basket with the most stones was the one on water. We learned in the process that if we didn't come together and work together and learn, nothing much was going to change. I think that for communities to be able to identify working together, to identify the kinds of things in their communities that are assets, creates a whole different lens and a way for them to look at their community that maybe they've never looked at it through that lens before. In the Appalachian Mountains, the Knoxville-based East Tennessee Foundation works with local communities and community organizations to increase capacity and to establish self-sustaining local funds. Coca Creek is surrounded by the Cherokee National Forest. Any direction you go out of here, you've got to go through the forest or go over it. And basically in the Coca Creek area, you have what was originally about five to seven communities. The East Tennessee Foundation really looks at the word community in community foundation. And by that, I mean two things. One, the size of the gift is important 
but the single most important thing is that everybody can can come to the table. Every there's a place for every size of gift. Um, so anybody can be a philanthropist. One of the things that again a community foundation can do is to help people move from thinking that the way to help others is just day to day in their lives, which is a wonderful and important way to help people, but to also realize that there are uh, tools that have been developed in communities all over the world uh, to help people. Sanford called me one night at the office and said, okay, we're ready to submit our proposal. And I said, great, what are you going to apply to? What are you going to apply for? And he said, we have a list of 290 projects. <laughs> I said, well, I don't think we can fund all of those. So uh, we got on this uh, workshop thing, and we had, in our first year, 12 workshops, one a month. We had workshops on uh, weaving and quilt making and uh, raising fish to <laughs> pottery, uh, all your crafts. The workshops become an industry within itself. We suddenly in the workshop business. Sanford called me and he said, you're not going to believe what's happening with our workshops. And I said, well, tell me about it. And he said, we can't possibly meet the demands by local people. So we, we think we need to do some more. And I said, well, I think that's a great idea. And he said, but guess what's happening? We're having people that are coming through here during the summer and fall that want to know how they can sign up. So they began then to, to realize that they could market their workshops to people that were coming from out of town. They're the only small community group I'm aware of that has such a comprehensive community plan reflected in a planning document. I mean, you can go and see what they plan to do for the next 10 years in Coker Creek, and, uh, and my bet is they'll do it. You can't develop people. People have to develop themselves. And what you need to give them is leadership and education. And I, I'm really saying that I think you, you, you need to give them tools that they need you need to give them the sense of empowerment that they need. Uh, you need to help them just deal, begin where they are and begin to deal with their own everyday issues and everyday concerns. When you start talking to them about permanent solution, they start listening, yeah? The communities themselves, they will say, Okay, if we make an effort today, that means this will last forever, and they start listening. A lot of sparks, you know, have taken place. And as a result, individual people um, no longer depend on other donors, but have become donors to their own, you know, projects. Uh, right now, uh, after the empowerment, capacity building, very many people have built their own dams on their own. And um, they have started, um, you know, planting vegetables and, um, you know, crops that they can sell and earn money, even during drought, you know, season. It is the process. How did they organize themselves? Did they bring everybody? Was the decision did the decision-making process involve everybody? Are you ignoring the women? Are you ignoring the youth? Are you ignoring the poor? You see, th these are the issues. Because once this process is not right, then you are going to have problems further down the road. Part of what gives communities encouragement, part of what builds local ph philanthropies, is to stay on that journey with them through a period of time because the foundation, meaning the East Tennessee Foundation, builds those relationships and that trust, and then they build those relationships and that trust. And you gotta be there for the long haul. It's like um, an idea you cannot stop. Yeah? It has come to a point where it has to work. Yeah? And I think it's across the world. Everybody's talking foundation, foundation, foundation. And where we are now, I think we're going to go to very great heights, yes.
The issue is the change of the mind and attitude towards uh, the, the environment and, and, and the community. And, and with that, we are doing very well. What can we do next? How can we use this to build and where can we go? What do we want our community to look like in 10 years, 20 years? What things will we preserve? Um, what things are we willing to lose? We may not have maybe done everything right, but I believe that we have succeeded in very many things. Yeah.